Let's go feed Marty, the aviary, the otters, the deer, the ducks, and the cassowaries. Okay, cowgirl, come on. Hey, can you get down? Okay, can you get down? We have ourselves two beautiful saddleback baby pigeons. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video here at the ranch. We are back at the ranch from South America. It was an absolute blast, and we have a ton of videos to show you guys. But I wanted to show you guys a quick little update on how the animals are doing here at the ranch because I missed them. Everyone looks absolutely amazing. Everybody looks great. The capybara squad looks good. We saw thousands and thousands of capybara. The only difference was they were freaking red and black because of the clay out there. But it was really cool seeing the wild capybaras out there and enjoying the wildlife of South America. Throw a little more food over here. But we're gonna feed all the animals in today's video, check on everybody and see how everything is doing. So let's have some fun. But before we show you everything on the ranch, let me throw you in today's sponsor. You guys know I talk about all different types of animals all over the world. And speaking of animals, you have to go check out the game called The Beast Lore. It has over 10 million downloads. And if you have a love for animals like me, this game is a perfect match. Beast Lord is an animal themed mobile game where you can collect beasts, explore new lands, build a kingdom and expand territory. Just like here on our ranch, we have capybara, ducks, munjack deer. But in Beast Lord, you can get beasts like the Black Panther's cheetah and a lot more. Just like I built my ranch as big as possible, I can build my beast kingdom in the forest big two and sometimes we have to attack to expand and defend our kingdom as you can see beast lord is a realistically painting style with vivid beats and more than 500 different animals the best part is we can train our favorite animals just like i'm training the lion right now the lion is my favorite because it has high combat attribute it can be a leader and has unique skills too and if you log into the game you can get a lion on the second day how cool is that some beginner tips I can give you is when you focus on training the line, it can provide bonuses to the beast squad. So my friends and I continue training to increase the expedition quality of the beast squad by leveling up to get the bonuses. Come help us join the important battle. The competition for the Forest King Swifty is absolutely crazy. Go click the link in the description down below so you guys can go get the line. Use the redeem code BL777. Get necessary resource supplies for early development. Go download and play Beast Lord with me. Make sure you guys go check that out. And we're gonna go show you guys some of the new baby animals we have on the range. The emus, the rias, they're all doing amazing. And I wanna show you something real quick. Since I've been gone, as you guys know, before we left, I was worried about the range. We moved all the eggs over there to the front by the aviary. But we actually have another nest for you guys. That's right over here. Check this out. Right here, you guys, we have a whole nother rhea clutch of eggs. I mean, absolutely crazy. These rias are laying a lot. And in my opinion, I really, really do think it's two females because of the fact of there are two nests now and nobody has started sitting yet. So I really think it's two uh, clutches of eggs from two different females, but that's all right. We got two healthy, thick females for next season. We're gonna have to get a male Rhea and we're gonna have to get another male Emu so that the following year for 2025, we will have a ton of fertile big bird eggs which can be really really cool so stay tuned for that and let's make that happen but the babies i wanted to show you guys are inside the pigeon loft the pigeon loft has exploded and exploded as in we have a lot of pigeons as you guys know they call them the rats of the sky and it is true they do produce a lot but i limit it a little bit and it's going to be the end of the season coming soon why because summer's around the corner and when summer comes we get a lot of mosquitoes and when the mosquitoes come they bite the baby pigeons and then the pigeons look like crap they look like they have bites all over them and they look like crap and sometimes they don't survive either so we don't want them to be having babies during the summertime so we have our last couple eggs left and let me grab you guys a little baby so right here we have ourselves two beautiful saddleback baby pigeons they're about three weeks old and they look absolutely amazing you can see they have the white feathers going around the back and they have the nice saddle wings they look absolutely amazing really really happy about them they have no bites yet, so that means the mosquitoes have not made it here to the ranch, which is a plus. Why? And how do I know they haven't made it here either? There's no water yet. When that water comes, the mosquitoes come, and then it just isn't a pretty sight. But let's put these little babies back inside of here. And we actually have this baby right here that hasn't left the loft yet. And they're pretty much ready to fly, but they look absolutely amazing. We might actually rehome these guys. They're nice red saddled little baby pigeons. Um, they're just about eating food already, but we're probably gonna rehome them to a couple friends them back inside they are flying they are ready to start moving but they got to figure out how to leave the loft on their own but this is the perfect time for them to leave to their new home because once they start flying then they're going to want to start coming back here close that back up that's my king of the star right there 
my best male pigeon who just flew off. Where's everybody else at? Did they take off? I don't see them anywhere. No idea. I don't know where they went. I just got dizzy. I don't know where they went. Hello? Oh, there they are. They're coming in hot. Real hot. Hold on. We're in the sunway. Let's look the other way. They're doing their thing right now. All right. Let's grab some hay. Throw it down. Feed it. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know if you guys counted how many eggs are over there, but that's the set of eggs we have over there. And then this is the other set of eggs we have in this section right here. Check it out. It's funny when they lay them, they're very, very bright yellow. And then after about, you know, a day or two, the sun just, you know, I guess, kills the yellow from them and makes them white. But look at that, you guys. Two big clutches of eggs. Absolutely insane. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them because they are not fertile. Probably just going to throw them all away. I'm not going to let them sit here because they just smell like crap. But let's feed the goats some hay, the cows some hay. Hay room always has to stay dry. And we get orchard grass, or we get ONA, or we get TNA. It's whatever we get available. Stuff comes all the way out from Canada, pretty freaking far. Got the Lena for some odd reason. Kinda does look like she's pregnant, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, guess we're just gonna have to find out later on and see what happens. Or she's just a very fat hay belly. <laughs> this area is done. Moving right along. Let's go feed the rest of the animals on the ranch. So one thing about owning animals, you guys, it's 365 days out of the year, every single day. Blue skies, black skies, green skies, yellow skies. It doesn't matter what it is. The animals have to be fed. So even if I'm not here, somebody's always here at the ranch. No matter what, 24-7, something has to get fed no matter what. So the same routine every single day, unless a new animal gets added or an animal has a baby, maybe something will change a little teeny bit. But other than that, it's always the same thing every single day. After we're done feeding, then the day starts. The day starts means figure out what the heck we're doing today, uh, what we're gonna clean, what we're cutting, what we're doing. It's always something. Every single day, it never stops here at the ranch, especially when you have this many animals. There's always things that has to get done. Let's go feed Marty, the aviary, the otters, the deer, the ducks, and the cassowaries. And then in the afternoons, it changes just a little bit, but not too much. Some of the other animals or nocturnal animals get fed, but then it's just a repeat again. The other thing that we have to do next week is we have a lot of trimming to do. The rains have started a tad and everything has boosted up and there's a lot to cut back to do. You can check around over here in front of the otter enclosure to see all the tall weeds. All the tall weeds, just like when we were in South America, the capybaras out there didn't eat certain weeds. Same thing happens here. They know what they can eat and they know what they can't eat. So this stuff has to get cut back. So for today, for the otters, we have a full trout. We have frog legs. We have a little bit of carrots and that's pretty much it. In the afternoon, they'll get frog legs, they'll get quail, they get tilapia, and maybe some green beans. This is Oliver. Yeah, that's Oliver right there. And that's Callie. Callie won't let you touch her, but Oliver will. Oliver's a good little boy. He's an absolutely amazing otter. And now that it's summertime, they are the best otters around. When it gets a little cold out and stuff, they act a little weird sometimes, but Oliver has been doing great. As it, woo! You gotta be quick though, because you're not quick sometimes, they will get you. And that was because he was just eating right now. And that was kind of my fault because I was messing with him. And he's like, I wanted to eat my food and I didn't want to get bothered. But nothing happened, as you can see, because I got to be quick and you always got to be high alert when you're around your animals. Nutella, Rita, Peanut, and Marg are all doing absolutely amazing. Here we go, you guys. We got some apples, we have some sweet potato, uh, we have some carrot, and we have their hoof stock diet. They get this every single day, twice a day. In the afternoon, it's a little bit less Fruits and veggies is more just grain and hay. That's it. But look at peanuts, horns. Absolutely amazing. Ooh, they're nice and sharp. And they look great. Nutella's is probably going to have a new fawn coming soon, which is going to be really, really cool. And we're just going to grow the herd and grow the herd and grow the herd. We're going to do some cutbacks inside of here. We have a little bit of tall bushes inside of here. And now that all the trees are nice and not showing any leaves, it's easy to pick out the branches that we want to cut. And we'll cut them all back so it'll be a nice, low, tall tree with a lot of shade for the summer to come. Let's keep on moving right along. Missy hasn't stopped or changed her direction of staying on the high spot right there on that tub. She has a doo-dooed on it a good amount, but um, that's her spot that she likes to hang out and just chill. So just a little process that I do right here. Feed everybody first. Got myself a nice little mouse. We like to switch the diet up. I'm never not against switching the diet up. Animals should have a diverse diet. Yes, I only sell feeder quail here on the ranch. So make sure you guys go check out Blake's Exotic Feeders. I have all quail sizes available at all times anywhere shipped in the United States. But I still recommend to switch the diet up as well. I am not against people using mice. I'm not against people using other stuff. So like Marty, some days he gets quail, some days he gets mice. I get my mice from some other people. But here you go, Marty. It's good to have a diverse diet. But the people that all feed chicks, in my opinion, 
It's like giving a tortoise romaine lettuce or iceberg lettuce. If you want to give them iceberg lettuce and not let them grow and let them just have some feeders, go ahead and do that. If you really like your animals, spend the money. If you can't spend the money, don't have that many animals at the end of the day. That's just my opinion. Let's go over here and let's go feed the cassowaries. So we're going inside the cassowary enclosure. Cassandra hasn't been in the cassowary enclosure for about a week and a half. So let's see how they go. Come on, you guys. So inside of here, it is looking absolutely amazing. And as Cassandra just did right there, as you guys just saw, you have to pretty much like do a bridge when they're going around you. They have the right of way. You let them have the right of way and that's it. But inside of here right now, it is looking beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. The seaside hibiscus tree looks great. The Simpson stoppers look amazing. The mulberries. It's did I get in your way? No, I didn't get in your way. Calm down, cowgirl. All right, over here, the mulberry tree looks beautiful. I mean, it is beautiful, nice and thick. The cherry tree looks great. It's throwing cherries all around on the ground, which is great. Our another seaside, no, our Simpson stopper going good. Our sea grape tree, the one I cut back, is starting to explode and look beautiful. So we're gonna get the shade back. And then our other guava tree, it's starting to sprout and look amazing too. So everything is looking really, really good inside of here. And it's getting really thick, exactly how I want it to be because where these guys come from, they like it thick. And I know you guys are all gonna say, when are you gonna expand the enclosure? We are. We're gonna start cutting it back in the next couple days and let them go back to where they started so they have the whole entire thing. But they've been doing great in this enclosure and they've been doing absolutely amazing. And I don't know what it is. I knock this spider web down every single day. This guy right here. And he comes back every single day. Such me in the bets. Like, go find a new freaking area. But coming over here into the aviary, it is absolutely the most overgrown I've ever seen it in my life. And it is beautiful, but it's time to cut her back. This, this week, for sure, I have a list of things that have to get done. And one of the main things, for sure, is going to be cutting this bad boy back. Because the branches, the trees, and everything inside of here is beautiful. But my trails are um, closing in. And that's what happens in the jungle. It gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And that's what's happening here. The birds don't mind whatsoever. But for me, I'm starting to mind. Okay, cowgirl, come on. Hey, can you get down? Yeah, can you get down? Can you get down? Thank you. Really want to have that banana right now, huh? Can we split the food up? Go about that much there, that much there. They got the soft bile diet in there today. Blackberries blueberries, apple, uh, we got papaya, banana, and I think that's about it. Oh, grapes, and we got grapes. The rest of this, we're gonna go for our Turacos that are right there, and they're like, let's go, stop talking, let's eat. Switch the bowl out. We see that they didn't eat all the soft build diet, but nothing goes to waste. I get this, drop it right there. Why? Because we have all of our yellowfoot tortoises that live inside of here, and they'll munch it all up. Strawberry tree, growing more strawberries. We need to cut all these back. And wow, if you guys remember the white-faced tree ducks we saw out in South America, well, we saw them in the thousands. We have my pair here, but to see them in the wild was just that cool. And I was really, really happy to see true white-faced tree ducks in their natural habitat, in the flatlands of the jungle. I mean, super, 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 super cool. Let's feed everybody up. Soft build diet there and put our hand out so we don't get hit by spider webs and put the rest there. You get soft build diet, they get a little bit of scratch corn and layer and that's it. But as you guys can see, we are overgrown. It is time to cut back. And next week we're gonna have a full video of maintaining the aviary. Stay tuned for that video. Make sure you always have your post notifications on because we got a lot of things to do. A lot of things to clean before the real, 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 real rains start. The water is absolutely beautiful and super 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 clear here on the aviary enclosure i mean look at that ecosystem right there with a massive wetland the water is great you got a giant largemouth bass sitting right there he looks woof he's on fire right there look at him go the tilapia look great everybody inside of here looks perfect i mean i cannot be happier with this ecosystem it looks absolutely amazing you barely see the animals inside of here you, you really you really can't wow look at that bass bro look at him he looks so 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 pretty tilapia nest in the background over there 
That's my big boy that we moved over. We moved them over there from over the other pond. We brought them into the side of here. But other than that, you guys, everything looks really, really good. We have a lot of trimming to do. I know I say that I've been saying that a lot, but we're gonna have a full on cut back. This thing is gonna get a haircut like I need today. And it's gonna look amazing. We do have some silver wood ducks over here. So let's come over here real quick. We might have some egg hatching soon. So let me see if we have anything that's happening. Ready, set, look in there. You see that? She's in there on a beautiful nest. So we're gonna let her go, let her do her thing. As soon as they're about to start hatching, we will collect everybody, pull them, and then she will double clutch. So we will have some silver wood ducks. Wow. I wish it was that easy to find turtles out here like it was in South America. We couldn't find anything out there. It was so hard. We were looking thousands and thousands of miles and we found them on the road. It was it was freaking crazy. We got more videos for you guys. I cannot wait to show you all the awesome videos. We caught my hose fell down. We're gonna have to reattach the hose when we cut back this enclosure as well. But I can't get over how very pretty the water looks today. It's almost like I might make another video and go freaking snorkeling. Like, wow, it looks beautiful. It is so, 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 so clear today. It looks amazing. And I haven't cleaned. And I know, I know Greg and Ed are gonna just like laugh if they're watching this video. I haven't cleaned this pond once. I've had this pond for three years running. I haven't touched one thing inside of here. With all the ducks, with everything inside of here, it's absolutely amazing. That's the reason why I wanna make the wetland for the capybara the same size as this, because I know if I do, we won't have any situation. The capybara pond will look crystal clear just like this, and I would only have to clean it once a year like the wetlands are supposed to be clean and maintained. So that is it for today's video here at the ranch. Make sure you guys go down and click the link in the description and download Beast Lord today, you guys. I would really appreciate it. And make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, put your post notifications on, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.